Hello? Oh, hey, sis, how's it going? You want me to make a wedding cake? You know I've literally never made a wedding cake before, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I totally can. I've made a cake before, so sure, yeah, okay, bye. Is this you? <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell somebody that you know how to make a wedding cake and that you could totally handle it and then now you're regretting your decisions? Well, you're in luck because today I'm going to show you how to make the easiest wedding cake. It's called a naked wedding cake. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to calculate your servings, how to stack each of your cake tiers, how to support them so it doesn't collapse, and finally, how to decorate with fresh flowers safely and I'm even going to show you how to deliver the cake and cut it. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first thing we're gonna need to do is do some math. No, no, wait, where are you going? Wait, I have a visual aid. Ha ha, okay, here we have something called a cake dummy. I did not name it that, all right? So if we have a four inch cake, four inches tall, two layers of cake inside, you can get six servings out of that. Probably only four, but we'll say six. Now, if we add a six inch cake, four inches tall, two layers of cake inside, this is 12 servings plus six. So we have 18 servings of the cake here. Now we add in an eight inch cake. We have 42 servings of cake. For a small wedding, this is gonna probably be plenty. But let's say you do want some more cake layers. We can add in another one. Here's a 10 inch. This is gonna give you 80 servings of cake, four tiers tall. And I'll have this printout on my blog post. I'll put the link in the video description below. So if you need to download it, go at it. Four tiers is a lot. So we're gonna just go with two. Good old eight inch and six inch. So this is gonna be 36 servings right here. You can do two layers or three layers. It doesn't matter how tall your cakes are. It's not gonna affect the amount of servings. I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and make my cake tiers three layers tall because I think it looks a little bit nicer. The first thing that I would recommend you get your hands on is a turntable. This is actually a Lazy Susan. I got it at Home Goods, and I love it because it's huge. There's plenty of space for any size tier. You can, you know, like frost your cakes without a turntable. It's just gonna be a little bit more difficult to kind of be like turning the cake and frosting at the same time. Now you need to make sure that you have cake boards for each size tier that you're making. So we're making an eight inch cake tier and a six inch cake tier. You can get these at Michael's, Joann's, Walmart, or you can get them online. And you have to have a cake board under each tier so that you can move them to and from the refrigerator when you're chilling and for when you're stacking the cake so that they are supported. Speaking of fridge, you might wanna clear off one of those shelves so you have enough space to put two cake tiers in. All right, let's talk cake pans. I am using Magic Line cake pans. These make really beautiful cake layers. They, they make them a nice golden brown, not too dark. I also like Fat Daddy-O's. For smoothing the cake, I like to use a bench scraper and an offset spatula. Both things that you can also get at Home Goods for really cheap. I actually got this one at the dollar store. If you don't have one, you can use a ruler, like a piece of acrylic, like anything with a nice straight edge. It's gonna make it go a lot easier for you. And I literally just use this for putting the frosting on the cake. This is probably my pet peeve when it comes to decorating a wedding cake. Please, please put your wedding cake on a cake board, not a cardboard. This is not strong or pretty. I like to use these cake boards from Cake Boards of Air. They're white, they have little feet on them. They're reusable, really nice. You can get a nice little cake stand, which is great for a small cake like this because you can go from a cake that's this big to a cake that's this big. Lastly, we're gonna need some straws. These are called milkshake straws. They're a little bit thicker and a little bit wider than a standard straw. And then you need one skewer to put through the two layers of cake so that they don't slide around during delivery. Now, if you're going to decorate your wedding cake with some fresh flowers, which I am going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do at the end of this video, so stick with me, you're gonna need some fresh flowers hopefully provided by a florist. <laughs> Usually bride and groom will have a florist that they're working with who picked up flowers for the bouquets, for the boutonnieres, for centerpieces. They should already have flowers on hand and then make sure they set aside some flowers for you in a glass or a bucket with some water at the venue so that when you go to set up, you can then assemble the flowers. 
You don't put flowers on in the studio, you do it when you deliver the cake. Now, if you're making this for a friend or you're attending the wedding, of course you can do it at home as long as they give you the uh, flowers ahead of time. But in general, you will not have the flowers while you're making the cake. I'll bring some plastic wrap with me and some straws and some scissors, okay? Because you're gonna wrap each flower stem in some plastic wrap and use a straw to insert it safely into the cake, which we'll go over more later. All right, now that we got the boring stuff out of the way, let's make a wedding cake. We're gonna start baking these two days before the event. Now, I know you might think that your cake is gonna dry out, but trust me, it's going to be okay. It's almost physically impossible to bake your cake and decorate it in the same day without crying many tears, especially if you're a beginner. I'm using my easy vanilla cake recipe and my easy buttercream, emphasis on the easy. I have a recipe to my easy vanilla cake right there. I also have an easy red velvet and an easy chocolate cake, depending on what you like. Easy vanilla cake is great because it just takes one bowl. You mix all your dry ingredients together, then you add it in the wet, mix it for one minute, divide it into your two pans and bake. Did I say it was easy? You're going to need one and a half batches of my easy vanilla cake to make an eight inch and a six inch cake. If you're gonna have more than two layers, some people like three layers, you're gonna have to make more cake batter for that. After you bake your cakes and they're barely warm, I like to wrap mine in plastic wrap and that will trap in all the moisture and then put them in the freezer overnight. That way it keeps them super moist. Okay, so now we're on day two. You wanna take your frozen cakes out of the freezer, set them on the countertop and get them defrosting. They do not have to be fully defrosted to start decorating. And now we're gonna make our buttercream. I like to use my easy buttercream. You just add in the egg whites, powdered sugar, mix for five minutes, add in your softened butter, then your vanilla and salt and mix till it's smooth and creamy. This is a really versatile recipe for pretty much any climate, except for it being too hot. You might wanna go with an American buttercream or even a white chocolate ganache or an Italian buttercream. I don't recommend using cream cheese or whipped cream, especially if you're a beginner cake decorator because those are very sensitive to heat and you don't wanna be struggling with that. All right, so I have my cake layers here that are defrosted but still cold and all I'm gonna do is cut off the dome so my cakes are flat. But because we're making a naked wedding cake, you don't wanna cut off the sides. Very important for keeping the moisture inside the cake and for how the cake looks. Try and cut that dome off as level as possible. No hiding our mistakes with a naked wedding cake. The style of naked wedding cake that we're making is kind of like a rough iced where there's buttercream all the way around the cake but you can see the cake showing through. Some people really prefer really seeing the layers of cake and they just don't want any buttercream on the outside. If that's the case, you're gonna wanna do some simple syrup around the edges of the cake to keep them from drying out. Simple syrup is just equal parts water, sugar, bring it to a boil, let it cool down, and then apply it to the cake with a pastry brush. So because we're doing a naked cake, our cake board has to be a little bit smaller because we're not going to be putting as much buttercream as you normally would. You don't want to see that cake board. So I'm just, I'm gonna eyeball it. It's not a big deal. Just about a quarter inch all the way around. So I want it, and then I'm gonna do the same thing to the eight inch. I'm gonna take a little bit of tape, apply it to my turntable, or you can use a non-skid mat if you have one. And then you can put your cake board on top and that will keep it from sliding around as you stack. And then we're gonna place our first layer of cake on top. Now we're going to spread our buttercream out using our offset spatula. We want that to be about quarter inch to a half inch thick. Nice and level. So the biggest mistake I notice beginner cake decorators is they tend to hold their spatula like this, right? So it makes a big hump in the center so your cakes don't stack evenly. So you just wanna really Take a look and make sure that you're going as level as possible. Just going from the center outward. And it's obviously okay if the buttercream goes over the edges. Next layer on top, nice and even with the bottom layer. I like to rotate the cake because then you'll see if anything is like hanging over the edge. Last layer of buttercream, smooth that out. That buttercream looks so good. And the last layer on top. So this technically is a naked cake, like literally no buttercream on the outside. 
Look how beautiful those edges look. So now we're gonna make this semi-naked. I'm gonna put a little, a little something, something on her. All right, now I'm just gonna kind of put a thin layer of buttercream all over the cake, just like you would do like a crumb coat. And what this is going to do is it's going to settle into all of the little crevices and make the cake perfectly even. And it's also going to seal in the moisture so that the cake won't dry out in the fridge. And I'm gonna do the top. Okay, here comes the fun part. We're gonna literally just scrape all of this buttercream off. Look at that. The really straight edges that are kind of almost caramelized really pay off. Fill in any holes that you need to. And then, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of it, you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna smooth out the top. Done. I'm gonna put this guy into the refrigerator and do our six inch. I put my offset spatula right underneath, lift up. That handy dandy cake board helps us lift our cake. All right, so now we're gonna do our six inch the exact same way. This is where you put on some good music, pump up the tunes. Like, all right, I got this. Liz, what was your first wedding cake like? <laughs> um, my first wedding cake was not that good. This was like 2008. And at the time I didn't know how to bake, so I was using box mix. I didn't refrigerate it and the sugar flowers were like so heavy. Every bump we went down, like the wires were like cutting through the cake. So by the time we got to the venue, the whole bottom tier had literally vibrated itself into crumbs. I used the hotel phone, called my sister, cause she's the only phone number that I have memorized, said you need to go to, to Safeway right now and go get me two pre-baked cakes and beg them to sell you some buttercream. And she went and got it, delivered it to me at the hotel, the reception's happening and I remade their entire wedding cake in the back kitchen with just like the flowers. I just like quickly took them off, cut off the top, refrosted it. And they were just like, oh, I thought she was supposed to set that up like an hour ago. And was like, dude, 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 this is normal. <laughs> yeah, that was my first experience. It was, it all worked out. It was fine. They were not mad. I mean, I hardly charged anything for that cake. So lesson learned. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and stack our two wedding cake tiers. I'm gonna use a six inch cake pan, which is the same size as the top tier to mark a line in my buttercream. And this is gonna tell me where to put my supports. So I'm going to go right in the center and then I'm going to use my thumb to mark right where it hits the top and then cut. And then I'm gonna use this straw to measure all of my other straws. So they're all the same length. So then I'm going to go about a quarter inch away from that line. A lot of people put all of their straws right in the center like this. And then what happens if you take a sharp corner, your cake actually collapses on the edge here. So you wanna bring your straws out to here. And then for cake supports, the rule is however many inches the cake is on top is how many straws you put in. It's a little bit lower here than it is to here. So we're just gonna even that out with some buttercream. Don't wanna see any gaps. If you don't have the straws in here to support the weight of your other tier, two tiers, you might be able to get away with it, but in general, the weight of the cake will crack the cake below. So now I'm going to place this one on top, make sure it's centered. And then we're gonna take this lovely skewer here. This is actually kebab stick. So it's a little bit thicker than a typical skewer. And we're gonna go right down in there. And then you're gonna feel it push through that cardboard. So I have just a little bit too high. I'm gonna go under just a touch so that it's all the way inside. And then we're just gonna cover that little spot, a little bit of buttercream. Now I'm gonna transfer the cake to my cake board. If I was thinking ahead, I could have just built it on the cake board, but I wasn't thinking. I put a little bit of buttercream on there so that it doesn't slide around. Make sure it's centered. 
And now I'm going to place this into the refrigerator overnight. A chilled cake is going to transport much easier than a freshly decorated cake. Don't worry, it's not gonna dry out because we have that thin layer of buttercream over everything. But if you are worried about it, you can cover this in plastic wrap to make extra sure it doesn't dry out. All right, so to deliver a wedding cake, I use just a regular old FedEx box. I go with whatever the size the cake board is. So this is a 10 by 10 box. I already taped the bottom and then I'm gonna use an X-Acto blade and I'm just gonna cut the corners. So then we'll have a little flap like so. I gotta tape down the center and then we can take our cake that's nice and chilled and just slide it right in there. Ooh, that's a nice fit. And you're like, Liz, this is too short. You can actually buy boxes that are 12 inches tall. I just didn't have one. Just tape up those little tops, the corners, and then the front. And then if it's raining, or if you wanna just like have extra cover, you can put some plastic wrap on top just to keep any like dust off of it, whatever. But the main thing about this is it just is stability for the cake and ability to carry it around. La la la, we're on our way to the venue, we're in the car, it's been very bumpy. Okay, we're here now. <laughs> I'm now at the venue and I'm setting up my cake and I can take it out of my box. You can also travel with your tiers individually and uh, stack on site. Take it out, right onto the cake table. I always take something with me called an O beep kit. <laughs> Scissors, plastic wrap, uh, straws, extra buttercream, piping bags, and always, always bring baby wipes because you will get buttercream on your hands. So in my uh, kit, I will have my piping bag. And what you wanna do is just put a thin layer of buttercream in that little crevice. You could do this actually at home, but I tend to do this at the venue. And then just pretend that you are a construction person and you're just going to wipe off the extra buttercream like you're caulking a bathtub. <laughs> this is why you can't have that board that's bigger because you wouldn't be able to hide that seam. Because there's no fruit filling and no uh, whipped cream, no uh, cream cheese, this cake could literally be sitting outside for 24 hours or more. I mean, I don't recommend it, but you don't have to worry about this like going bad. This kind of buttercream is totally stable at room temperature. If it's really hot, I recommend you, you know, eat it pretty quickly, but uh, you don't have to worry about refrigerating this at all. All right, so our cake is ready to decorate. Let's go ahead and prep our flowers. So it's very easy to prep your flowers. We're just gonna go with about two or three inches of stem, and then you want to remove any of these little bad petals that look kind of yucky. Oh, so pretty. These are actually little tea roses. They kind of look like ranunculas. And you can kind of open them up with your finger. Now to trap all of that water inside the stem, we want to cut a little piece of plastic wrap, not very big, maybe two inches by two inches. And you're just going to wrap the stem. And what this does is not only does it keep the water inside the rose so it stays fresher for longer, but it keeps anything from leaking out. So I got these flowers from one of my favorite florists here in Oregon called Showcase of Flowers in Newburgh. One thing you always wanna keep in mind when you're picking flowers for your cake is think about how big your cake is, right? So we don't have a very big wedding cake, so you don't want some huge, huge roses. So this is kind of like a standard rose and this is the tea rose. So this would look way too big on a little two-tier cake. So now I'm just gonna kind of Continue on fluffing my little flowers, adding the plastic wrap. And you also wanna have a couple of berries. It's basically like a mini bouquet, right? So we're going to take our flower and insert it into a straw. And now we can insert this into the cake. And then I'm gonna do a slightly smaller one for the chop. So for this one, I have to cut the stem down a little bit because I'm hitting the cardboard. Right, so that's kind of like a little mini bouquet. And then I wanna add a couple of my berries and filler around that. This flower doesn't wanna stay, so I'm gonna pipe a little buttercream in there. There you go. 
I try to create like flow, right? So a little bit filler up top, some down at the bottom, so your eye kind of flows up the cake. Very cute, very natural. All right, so I know you're gonna ask, I'm gonna tell you how to cut and serve a wedding cake. First, you wanna take off all of the flowers, set them aside, and then you wanna take the top tier off of the bottom tier and just place it in front of you with a knife. If you can, it's really great to have a cup of warm water nearby so that you can keep your knife hot. This is gonna make your servings a lot cleaner. Then you're going to go ahead and use my serving guide, which I'm sure you printed off from my website by now, if not, it's there for you. And you might think, oh, we're gonna cut this into wedges. That's true for smaller tiers, but generally what you wanna do is start with cutting off a wedge off the very front of the cake and then cut that into two pieces. Then you're gonna come in two inches, cut another slice, and then cut that into roughly one and a half, one inch pieces. You might think this is a small, but because it's so tall, it's plenty of cake for each person. And this is how you're gonna get the most servings out of each tier. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ding the bell if you wanna see more videos like this one and I will see you in the next one. Bye.